Okay, let's see. All right, how's it going, guys? Good to see everyone this morning. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, my name is Jared Chavez. I am a senior character artist for the games industry. I currently work at Firewalk Studio. Um, if you've been here before, glad to have you back. If you're uh, a new viewer, glad to see you guys. Um, so what we're doing today on stream is we're just going to continue to work on, uh, the dog anatomy sculpt that we've been doing the past couple of streams. You know, we still got a long ways to go before it's done. Um, just keep chipping away at things. This is where we're at right now. We've been working on the head, uh, the last stream. So I was just gonna, you know, keep that rolling, keep the momentum going, um, for those of you who are new with the stream, uh, the way I like to do things is, is just kind of, um, you know, sculpt away, but I like to take a lot of questions, you know, um, so if you have anything that you're curious about pertaining to, to my workflow or, um, ways I've created things or things in the game industry or, you know, um, anything like that. If you guys want to talk about movies, games, whatever, I'm, I'm pretty much an open book. I like to just chat while I'm doing these, um, you know, definitely makes things go by quicker. And, um, obviously I want these, these, uh, lessons to kind of be opportunities for, for people that are curious to ask questions and hopefully learn something. So that's a little bit about me for those of you who are new. Um, but we'll just kind of go ahead and dive right in, keep keep sculpting away. Uh, where I left off last time was uh, with this head sculpt. It's still pretty sketchy, still getting in some of the forms. Um, I probably need to attach the ears at some point and like kind of carve out the ear canal and do all of that stuff. But uh, this is where we're at. I kind of did think about potentially maybe changing the type of dog that I'm doing just because like the floppy ears is going to kind of get in the way um, with what we're doing. So I may potentially do that. I'm not 100% sure yet. But for right now, we'll just kind of keep uh, keep chugging along. And yeah, like I said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, I like to be an open book during these. So, uh, Hey, how's it going, Jace? Uh, Seth, what's up? How's it going? Mr. J Azure. Good morning. Glad to see you guys can make it in. Okay. So, uh, where I kind of left off is trying to sculpt some of the forms throughout the neck. So, uh, with this breed of dog, there's going to be a little bit more of kind of like this loose skin. So that's kind of where I left off with things, um, before starting the stream. So we'll just keep chugging along on that, try and reinforce some of this stuff. Uh, is it okay if I take a break from sculpting for a year or will I lose my skill? Um, no, you probably won't lose your skill. Um, you should, I mean, I can't speak to it personally. I've never really taken a break for that long. I've taken a break of, you know, like a month or two. And that's just because of like being at different steps in the process of making a character. So, I mean, I definitely do kind of like stop sculpting. Um, and I, I don't think you'll lose your skill. I think you'll definitely have to brush it off once you get back into it, but I don't think it's going to be like starting from ground zero. So, Hey, how's it going, David? Okay, so let's get this kind of chiseled back a little bit. How's everyone's week been so far? Hopefully you guys have all been doing good. Had a good Monday, hopefully. A good start to, to Tuesday. Uh, it's been good, you know. Um, uh, yesterday was a pretty productive day uh, throughout, so hopefully today will be the same way. You know, I like productive days. I like to get stuff done when I can, so... And we're starting off right with the stream in the morning. Let's knock this out just a little bit. OK. 
Okay. I was potentially thinking about streaming another character that I had been working on, but I wasn't sure whether I was going to do that or not today. Um, on my personal stream, so for those of you guys who aren't familiar, I do stream on my own personal YouTube channel. You should be able to find that information on in the uh, description. But in that channel, um, we've been sculpting a couple of different characters. Uh, we have been doing a Gengar piece um, based off of some work by Stephen Oakley, which that one's pretty much done at this point. Uh, there's a little bit of final tweaks that I got to make on that, but that one's pretty, pretty far along. Um, and the other piece that we started doing was we were start, we were starting to sculpt an Allosaurus bust, um, which has been a really fun piece still really early on. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to check that channel out, uh, cause you'll definitely have some other streaming content over there as well. So... Uh, let's see. Hey, how's it going, Molly? Uh, let's see. Uh, morning, Jared. Uh, Jose from Brazil. I love your work. Congratulations on being a great artist. Do you have your interface to download somewhere? And thank you. Uh, I don't. Um, I've gotten a couple of questions about that. I would probably have to re, uh, to overhaul it a little bit because there's a bunch of like this stuff down here that isn't really super organized anymore um like i use a couple of these buttons but not quite as as i had originally intended them to so i probably need to kind of like organize that um a little bit more uh before i put something out but maybe yes in the future maybe i'll maybe i'll do that because that would um i've gotten a couple of questions about that so I sock it just a little bit more. So obviously we're still really low because we're using Dynamesh. So I'm probably at a point where I could move forward with. Um, oh, okay, let me think about this. Because now if if I move forward with um, Z remeshing this, then that is going to make it. I would probably have to start merging the ears in at some point soon. So now is that pivotal moment where I decide if I'm going to change, which I kind of am leaning more towards changing. So I think I'm going to nuke the dog that I'm doing. Um, and instead, I'm going to shift to a different breed of dog, which uh, I do already have in mind. So what we're going to do for that is we'll start getting new ears in. Because uh, I think that just those those type of ears are going to cause more problems than they are going to be helpful. So that is part of my logic with that. So we'll get something in place and then we'll start to reshape the head a little bit. Wasn't sure if I was going to keep it. I kind of was going back and forth on it. So but I feel like it would probably be more beneficial to not watch me have to like fight with the the character, you know. And something like that where I'm scooping out and getting all that stuff out of there is going to uh, probably be more more fight than it's worth, in my opinion. So, let's move that. And let's start carving these in. Okay. 
So if you've been on any of the past streams, you will know that I by no means am an expert at animal anatomy, which is part of the reason why I wanted to do animal anatomy on stream. You know, it was a good opportunity for me to kind of practice and work through um, relearning some of this stuff. And, you know, I haven't done a, a dog sculpt in a very, very long time. So I figured, you know, might as well do that. It's an opportunity to kind of brush up on some old knowledge and hopefully you guys can learn something from it as well. Uh, let's see. Um, do you have learning courses? Yes, uh, I do. Um, so I have a couple of different things that I have available if you're curious in learning or seeing more stuff about my process. Uh, first, which is the cheapest, is my YouTube channel. Um, I have, you know, different texturing videos. I'll bring that, that channel up here in a little bit. It's also found in the link below uh, in the description. Um, there I offer, or there I have like a lot of different videos of some of the processes that I've done for different characters. So uh, last week I actually released an orc piece that I did on ArtStation. Um, and I have like a breakdown video of that inside of my channel. So feel free to check that out if you guys are curious on that. Um, I also teach at CGMA. There I teach a texturing course. So I teach a texturing for games course. Uh, and that is the only class that I teach there for them. Um, okay, let's get these situated okay. um and then on top of that i also have an art station learning course that i did last year uh so that is up on art station if you are curious about that as well uh that one is talking a little bit more about uh creating a character for an art test um which is something that you may stumble upon if you are getting into the game industry. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, you guys can find that useful. But those are the uh, the options that I kind of have right now at this moment. Um, so I'm currently texturing a very dark skin character. Could you give me some tips, please? I'm curious with color zones, reds, blues, yellows, is it the same or should I change my approach? Um, so it is the same, uh, you are using the same process. Um, you're probably going to use a little bit of a different color scheme. What I would recommend, and I recommend this to a lot of people is if you go to ArtStation and search, um, breakdown, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, I, I kind of recommend this breakdown to everyone because it's kind of how I started to learn different skin tones. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so this breakdown, or Quinn's face breakdown, this is the one I recommend uh, checking out. Um, there's a really good breakdown on, on his approach to skin. So this is like a good way of kind of just going through and seeing how uh, it's approached. Plus there's a bunch of other like really useful information in regards to like hair and uh, different things like that. So that is what I would uh, recommend. Um, really useful tutorial, really, really good stuff. A lot of what's going to come into play is going to be uh, darker skin tones. So like some more oranges, some more browns, um, some more purples is what you're probably going to be uh, dealing with instead. So let's tuck these jowls because this is not going to be quite as prominent on this breed. Um, let's see. I'm curious if this model is going to be for game engine. Uh, which one do you prefer? Or which one do you prefer to make a polygon lower Z remesh or retopology? Um, this is not going to be for a game engine. This is just purely because, just because um, I will sculpt this just on stream. I won't make it like a game res character or anything like that. Um, but this is going, if, if I was to, I would do my retopology in Maya. 
Um, I don't use Z remesh for like low res topology. I use it for sculpting topology. Um, you can't really get away with Z remesher uh, for a production sort of pipeline, unfortunately. As much as it would be nice to not have to deal with retopology, unfortunately, you can't. Cannot. Um, I probably need some more reference of this breed. Uh, but no, I'm not doing a Doberman. This is just going to be a Belgian Malinois instead. A um, little bit more like structured, kind of fierce looking dog. Uh, they're, they kind of look like a German Shepherd, but probably a lot meaner. Um, they're very scary dogs if you've never seen them. They like to bite things. They're a biting dog. Very intimidating. They're usually, I think, what is used on like law enforcement and stuff. Um, they're like, if, if you imagine a, a really thin, lean German Shepherd with short hair, that's essentially what it looks like. Which, if you ever see them, and see some of the stuff that they do. Like I saw a video the other day and it was of a Belgian Malinois like taking big old bites out of like a chunk of dirt. It, it was crazy. They're scary dogs. Okay, so let's get some more angle in this. Okay. All right, let's catch up. I know I am a little behind on chat. Uh, beautiful emojis things don't let me click the dots. Um, hello, I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, can you share your Z or UI for ZBrush? Uh, I, I talked about that a little bit earlier. Maybe at some point, um, I gotta like clean it up first. Uh, how many polygons uh, are you using for high quality SF character armored hard surface? Uh, I mean, for the high poly, I'll use as many as I can. Um, I, I, when sculpting and doing things like that, I don't ever pay attention to the high poly count. It's really as much as my computer can handle, um, for like an in-game character. It, it doesn't, yeah, for an in-game character, it varies. Um, so usually that's like one of the big questions that a lot of people ask is like, oh, well, how many polygons can I use? It, a lot of what constitutes the answer to that is on a case-by-case -case basis. So like, for example, um, if you're making like a top-down RTS game, you're not going to need as many polygons for a character because you're going to be viewing them from a distance. Uh, so you don't need to worry too much about holding up silhouette. Whereas like if you're working on a game that's like has a lot of close-ups and cinematics and things like that, then you're going to have to start worrying about stuff like that. So a lot of it's just context plus um, the project establishes those settings. So I don't really ever have a good answer for that. And that's usually why most people kind of answer it with like a, an, I don't know, um, and don't really have like a definitive answer is because there's not really a definitive answer for that. Um, but I would say if you're working on personal work, I would say a hundred thousand to 150,000 on a personal project is not, not like unheard of by any means. So if I saw a portfolio piece with that much, I wouldn't really bat an eye at it. Um, but if you are like, again, trying to work on like maybe an RTS piece, like game style character or like a... I don't know, like a Blizzard style character, you could probably justify using less than that. So just kind of, just kind of depends. Um, uh, do you have other tutorials for organic sculpting? Yeah, I would check out my art station. Uh, there's all of the characters that I've done on there. Um, and you can find like some of the, the pieces have tutorials with them. Um, I do have, 
a YouTube channel. That's where like majority of my content lives now at this point. Um, I'm still kind of growing the library, but I do have a couple of different uh, things on there that you could check out. Let's see. I'm going to look for some reference real quick. Got to check some of these profiles and things like that. Um, yeah, so see, this is this is an image of the dog. Very like sharp and lean and kind of scary looking, but they're really cool dogs. Oh, so for example, Halo style. Um, yeah, it's it's hard. I don't know definitively like what I would use for that. Um, I I'm not really much of a hard surface guy, so I'm probably not the best uh the best person to ask that question. Unfortunately, um, I would maybe recommend checking out Marco Plouffe's channel if you haven't. Uh, he's usually the guy that I recommend to people for hard surface work. Um, he is very, very good at what he does. So check his stuff out. Um, I know that he also streams, so he you, he might be able to give you a little bit of a more definitive answer than, than I can <clears throat> on that. Excuse me. Okay, so we're going to, since we can like kind of merge these two together now and I can continue to kind of shape those. Uh, let's do this. Down. Okay, cool. And then redo that. Then now this can kind of give me the ability to start worrying about some of these forms and how they're going to interact. Man, a lot of people really want the interface. Yeah, I'll I'll have to work on that. Um, let's see. Jared now added horns to the hounds. Uh, unfortunately, not. It's not a bad idea, but <laughs> no horns yet. Uh, that's exactly what I've been looking for. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Um, uh, I've noticed that in this channel you have live on some days of the week. Can someone give the exact program, please? Uh, so this is ZBrush. Um, that is what I use for all of my sculpting needs is ZBrush. Because I think it's the best, the best around. Um, I would prefer to use this over anything, so... I remember when I was in college and I tried telling people about ZBrush, I'd tell them it was like the best invention since sliced bread. And I, I still hold pretty, pretty true to that statement. It's a great tool. So if you've never used it before, definitely would check it out. Um, can do a lot of amazing sculpting work in here.
let's get a little bit of curve in that. Probably need to get an image of what these look like from the side. That's better. Uh, let's see. Um, Jared, uh, hey Jared, what is, in your opinion, a very efficient way of learning anatomy? Um, I usually recommend taking a course. I I learned the most about anatomy by taking a course. Um, I took a course at CGMA with Christian Bull, which I believe he is still the instructor of it. Um, and he he has a very good way of kind of like simplifying. Um, the anatomy. If you don't have the the ability to take that class right now or whatever, I would recommend also checking out um, Anatomy for Sculptors. I would pick up that book. Uh, I think that that book is a very, very great way to get knowledge about uh, anatomy because it's all very, very simplified. They do a very good job of breaking down um, things into very simple like forms and things like that and they also break it down from the perspective of being an artist so like I don't need to know every single muscle's name I don't um so if you just know where the muscles are what they do where they attach to why they're kind of important um some of the bony landmarks how the skeleton exists underneath then you'll you'll get probably about 90 percent of the way there so i would recommend that book uh because it will give you a lot of information in regards to being a character artist and how to apply anatomy from a character artist perspective um so yeah, that's that's what I would recommend uh, in regards of things to know for being a character artist. Um, the most important things are is understanding how the skeleton works. So just like not necessarily knowing every single bone, um, but knowing where like your bony landmarks are. So like if you look at your wrist, for example, you have a bony landmark here kind of here but this can guide where muscles are attaching to so you have muscles that wrap around and attach to here and so it kind of it just gives you a little bit more landmarks to build your uh character off of so and that's like why if you watch people who sculpt uh characters from scratch that is usually how they're doing anything that's like human anatomy is because if, if you know where the bony landmarks are, then you can you can kind of build um, a skeleton off of that and have a pretty good idea of what you're doing. So yeah, I need to find some images front wise because this probably doesn't look exactly right. Uh, da, da, da. why do you prefer clay spin over buildup? Um, I prefer clay spin because you can see it's like an, it's more of a fall off. Um, whereas like clay buildup, uh, where is clay buildup? I don't even know if I have clay buildup on here. I don't think I have it on here, but, uh, versus clay tubes. This has much more of a rounded form to it, whereas this has like a sharp fall off. So I use clay build up because it allows me to build form a lot quicker. Um, it's a little bit complicated to use if you've never used it. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like how it reacts, but that is uh, kind of like my go-to brush. I use that in uh, a clay forms brush that I made a while back, which this is just kind of like a very low opacity um, clay tubes, so. These ears are so complicated. There's so many forms in them that you have to account for. That is probably one of the harder <laughs> spots on a dog to 
to get right is the ears because there truly are just so many ways that like all these like helixes like the the outer portions of the ear kind of like overlap with each other and whereas like a human i feel like a human's ear is pretty pretty easy to sculpt dog ears they've always been a little bit tricky for me though um proko on youtube is a great anatomy source as well yes proko has a lot of really useful stuff i would definitely check that out as well uh a great course i think is introduction to anatomy by henning sandin it's new <clears throat> I'm, I, is that on flips normals um because if so yeah i i'm pretty sure that that's a yeah good good resource to watch as well usually the one thing that i i recommend is just trying to learn from someone who uh has has a strong understanding of it there's like classes by i think scott eaton has one um he used to um who else is there uh steve lord has some good ones um yeah so <clears throat> that's that's usually what i recommend when it comes to anatomy though so we're making progress it looks like a dog which is always the best indicator of things let's maybe bring this up a touch Um, uh, he really goes in depth and you get great anatomy model to practice. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'll have to check that out. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, awesome stream. What headphones are you using? Um, they are Corsairs. I don't know what the model is though. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I, uh, I was provided these headphones, so I'm not, I didn't, I didn't buy them. Unfortunately, uh, they were, they were given to me. Um, the headphones that I do have that I normally use are the hyper X, uh, headphones, these bad boys. Um, the only reason I don't use these on stream is because they uh they turn off after a while so if i'm not actually like getting any audio input or anything from someone then they will turn off on their own so i just use a plugged in headset for for streams so that is where these ones came into play Okay, let's see. Oops. Um. Okay, that's a good image. I don't want to do that. Open a new tab. Boom. Beat it. Okay, cool. Yeah, that'll work. Um little personal question if you could go back 10 years uh what advice would you give yourself regarding 3d of course um yeah i would tell my <clears throat> excuse me uh i would tell myself to listen to what one of my teachers told me and not kind of just brush it off as um like oh i could just brute force my way to to getting there but i would tell myself um listen to an instructor that I had. And what that instructor told me was he was like, okay, so I have a brother who's a 3d modeler. Um, and he's incredible at it, but he went to art school, studied art and basic art principles and foundations. And because of that, he got so much better at his craft. Um, and I would recommend studying art principles. When I was in college, it was kind of like a, 
make characters um, figure out how to do 3D and then not really worry about like art. Um, and that I think was very detrimental to how long it took me to get to where I am. Um, because it wasn't until I started taking classes at CGMA that I was like, oh, you know, um, I don't have a very good understanding of art principles and fundamentals. And my art wasn't really progressing because of that. Um, my art was very, very weak. Um, I could sculpt, I could use ZBrush, but I couldn't take advantage of like any art principles. So because of that, my, uh, my work just kind of suffered. So that is the biggest thing that I would go back and tell myself is, um, practice, take art classes a lot sooner than I did. Um, because if you can do that, you will, uh, your work will improve exponentially, which if you can't do that, what I would recommend doing is going on YouTube and watching like, um, watch painting videos, um, or drawing videos and learn from people that have good art fundamentals, um, in painting and drawing your, you kind of have to have those to be good at it. Um, whereas sculpting digitally, I think a lot of people kind of just jump right into it. And I know that that's what I did. So, um, I think that having strong art fundamentals will help you immensely as an artist. And it's definitely something that I wish I took much more seriously than I did. Um, because I would have gotten, gotten better a lot quicker. So that is what I recommend to everyone. Okay, so I think we're kind of in an okay point where I can, let me actually, uh, yeah. Okay, so we're at an okay point right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this and Z remesh it because I don't like to work on uh, Dynamesh for too long just because the forms get a little bit hard to manipulate and I can hopefully start to move a little bit faster with something uh, lower res. So yeah, watch some Bob Ross. Um, and anything regarding like or like fundamentals of art, the, the better it is. Um, because I use the fundamentals of, of art in, in every piece that I do now. Um, and that is immensely important. So let's project this back in. Okay, so now I have some topology that is cleaner to work with. So now I have subdivisions. So this is gonna make things a lot easier for me to start managing. Um, let's move this up. Uh, art principles, got it. Could you elaborate? Um, yeah, so like understanding form, um, understanding primary forms, secondary forms, tertiary forms, um, though that for sculpture is going to be immensely important. Understanding silhouette, uh, understanding line weight, um, understanding proportions, anatomy, uh, light value. So a lot, all of those things will greatly help you in, in everything that you, you do as a, as a character artist. Um, and I, I try my best to really take those things seriously and I try to apply them to all of my pieces. Yeah, so that's what I would recommend. Uh, what is your pen tablet? Um, I have a 24, 
QHD Pro, I think is what it is. It's not the newest model, but it's like the past one. It has like the remote with it. I don't, I don't remember which one it is. Um, I used to have a 24 HD, but then uh, upgraded to this, um, which is this necessary? Mm, no, um, I, I don't think a, a pen display is a, a must for this. If you want to use an Intuos, that is perfectly fine as well. Don't want that shift in planes right there. Want this to be a little bit more angular. This nose up just a touch, not quite as big. Okay, cool. Um, let's see, as in, could you name the most important ones that translate the most to sculpting? Um, I don't know if there's necessarily a most important one. I would say understanding of primary, secondary, and tertiary forms is probably going to be the biggest one that's most applicable on like uh, a day-to-day, -day. Um, but they're all incredibly important. You know, I use line weight in sculpture. I use value in my texturing. Um, I use lighting in my rendering. I use lighting in, you know, getting my final composition and things like that. Understanding composition is another one. All of them play some sort of factor into making something uh, appealing. So I don't know if there's necessarily like a most important one is they're all kind of, they're all really important. Let's get some more of the musculature up on the skull done. Um, some of these muscles up here back in place because this dog has got some biting strength, so gonna be a little bit more prominent up here. So you'll notice I keep like standing up like this. This is just me looking over my monitor. I don't have an arm on my second monitor and I guess I could do that, but then I'm gonna constantly be like this, which maybe I will, that's fine. Um, uh, Dynamo, uh, hi bro, do you use Dynamesh first? Uh, yeah, yeah, for the most part I do, um, just to kind of get some of my basic forms and stuff in there. That's usually when I uh, use it most. Um, and then once I have kind of like stuff in place, I will start to uh, do a Z remesher 
um, just to give myself a little bit cleaner topology. Okay. So get a little bit of a steeper plane change here. But yeah, so one one of the reasons why um, I am doing this uh, and why I recommend things like this or exercises like this is because um, I like to do creatures. I like to do like monsters and things like that. Um, if you're familiar with my work, that's that is what a lot of this stuff that I do is is like creatures and monsters. Um, I do do humans, but. Uh, since I worked on Back for Blood, I have much more of a fondness for doing creatures. Um, and so understanding atom, animal anatomy, what is it, animal, uh, animal anatomy, um, along with like human anatomy, will really help you make uh, believable creatures and things like that. So that's part of why I um, also wanted to study this. Super useful if you understand those two uh, two types of anatomy, animal anatomy and, and uh, human anatomy, it'll definitely help you as well in creating a lot more interesting and appealing animals. These eyes need a lot of love. They're really bad right now. Oops. Uh, actually, you know what, let's get some of this stuff sculpted back here too as well while we're at it because I don't want to like neglect um, this back part of the neck. Regarding creature sculpting, which landmarks, muscles, and bones would you consider extremely important uh, in comparison to the human anatomy? I mean, uh, I would compare, I would say that they're the same. Um, you know, you're looking for like the epicondyles of like the wrist, collarbones, usually one, um, the pointers on your hips where like all of your obliques and stuff attach to, um, where else like your elbows. I, I usually for, for creatures, uh, do the same sort of, um, uh, same sort of spots, you know, um oh yeah so by the way your xenomorph series is insanely useful just wanted to point that out yeah so in regards to that that one was was pretty much like a one-to-one -one human anatomy with like extended legs and like extended limbs and stuff like that uh but all the same same sort of bony landmarks and things like that uh that you would look for on human anatomy um so, yeah, I mean, dogs and creatures and all of those things, they all have kind of the same sort of landmarks that I, I like to look for in my work. Is anyone uh, working on any cool projects? at the moment I have a couple of things outside of this that I'm trying to get done I um, 
have the the demonic Gengar piece that I've been working on in my free time, which I'm finally like at a point where I think I'm kind of content with how that looks. Uh, there was a while where I was definitely not feeling it, um, especially once I it was like in the render stage. But I spent a couple of hours last night doing uh, doing some work on it, and I, I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm there, you know, I feel like it's, it's at that point where I'm like, okay, I'm happy with it. I think I should probably start to kind of wind down on it and not, uh, overthink it too much. Cause if I do that, then it starts to look bad and then I start to hate it. And I feel like I'm at that, that nice sweet spot of not hating it right now. <laughs> Uh, how do you get rid of creases in a mesh? The smooth tool isn't working. Um, I'm not sure how you mean. If you have like really condensed topology, uh, in an area, then that's probably what's causing it. Um, yeah. So I, I would say that that's probably where you're getting your issues from is from, uh, how dense the topology is. Let's go up a division. Get this form a little bit more situated. It's kind of looking a little sausagey, which is not quite what I want. I just finished a 3D Kitsune mask I hand painted. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to say no on sharing the link, unfortunately, just because uh, this isn't my channel and, um, you know, I don't want to uh, do anything that ZBrush wouldn't approve of. But that's very cool, though. And painted stuff is a lot of fun. Um, I've never never had a ton of experience in doing it but uh over the years i've i've started to kind of try it i don't know if i could even say like i'm proficient at it by any means but uh i definitely like to do it it's a lot of fun a lot of fun Um, I'm working on a 70s, 80s lowered van sitting at a 40s vintage gas station. Oh, that's that sounds cool. Uh, I was a traditional artist before, so I love it. It takes time and patience. Yeah, definitely. I, I think um, that's also the other thing that I've been trying to learn that kind of goes with what I said about like uh, not being as much traditional art sort of background um, a lot of what I learned was outside of art classes but uh, the more I like take the traditional sort of arts and things like that and, and, and watch painting videos and things like that I feel like that makes my work uh, a lot better um, which is good I, I like I like all that stuff and I like that style and I feel like it makes it much more appealing, you know, as I've gotten older, uh, I kind of find like photorealistic, like 
stuff not quite as exciting like don't get me wrong i still do stuff like that like the orc uh piece was more along those lines but there was a lot of like painting sort of approach that i took to it and i feel like that is what i like to do even now with my uh my realistic stuff is is not necessarily focus on like one-to-one photorealism but like adding a little bit of a stylization in there that um you know makes things a little bit more poppy and interesting and i also like to do that with like my my uh lighting and things like that lighting is a really fun aspect that i enjoy taking advantage of once i finish a character definitely would recommend doing it with your pieces if you don't Um, let's see. Uh, I was taught Maya in college, but now I'm learning ZBrush on my own. Yeah, same with me. I was, um, I was taught Maya when I went into college. Uh, and I've, I've talked about this before. I had like a really bad perception of like what the game industry and film and all that stuff actually used. Um, and, and, I remember seeing ZBrush and I was like, oh, people don't actually use ZBrush in games or film or whatever. Like people model and make everything in Maya. I was really wrong, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, it's I, I that when I first started learning 3D in college, uh, I had like that weird perception that this wasn't like a tool, like the industry standard, you know what I mean? Like everyone so so fascinated with like what the industry standard was and i was like oh that's not the industry standard but like in reality it was i just was not not the brightest i guess <laughs> um but yeah i i self-taught myself a lot of stuff using zbrush uh when i first started as well there's a lot of resources to learn zbrush which is good and it's a fun tool to learn and use, so. Which video games had the most impact on your art style? Uh, honestly, I don't know if I could say movies or games really I mean, I guess there were some games, but I think other artists have much more of an impact on my art style. Um, because I like usually pick things from other artists that I really like and admire and try and like implement into my own work. And I think, I think the idea of style is a very like kind of foreign thing to me. Um, because I, for a long time, I didn't really feel like I had a style. Um, which I feel like is like a common thing with a lot of artists. Um, I, I didn't really feel like my stuff kind of stood out, but now the more that I've done, the more I've realized what my style is and I can kind of see it now. Um, but I think a lot of it comes from more like painting and drawing inspirations than it does, uh, games. Um, like occasionally I draw inspiration from, from games, but it's more so the artists that made it as opposed to uh, the games on, you know, if that makes sense. Um, Cause like for, for creature sculpting and stuff, uh, I, I drew a lot of inspiration from like Carlos Wante, um, Jason Martin is a big one. Uh, Brian Wynia is another, another big like inspiration that I draw from for creatures. Um, Stephen Oakley's, concepts is uh usually what i like to kind of like base my sculpts off of because i i really like his um style and work which if you've followed uh my work at all that's what 
probably like a quarter of my portfolio is based off of at this point because I like to make his demonic Pokemon. Um, Della Longfish is another another one that I draw a lot of inspiration from. Um, so a lot of like different concept artists and, and sculptors and stuff is is more so where I think I draw my my inspiration from. If I was to say or one the the biggest movie that I drew inspiration from, which I I wouldn't say like stylistically I drew it from, but um, the reason that I'm doing this was Jurassic Park. Uh, Jurassic Park was like the the major influence for me when I was a kid. I I originally wanted to be a paleontologist, and until I realized that you had to like write a lot, I was like, okay, that's not a career for me because I suck at writing and um, I like doing art. So I was like, well, maybe I can make dinosaurs in movies or something. And then I didn't really know how to make that happen, but I somehow, you know, figured it out, I guess. Somehow I found my way into doing it. Just kept doing it until I got a job. <laughs> Um, having the art fundamentals is for sure super important and same. I like more stylized because it feels more artistic. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's that I think is what I had a really hard time with in college was I didn't feel, I didn't feel like I had my own style and I didn't feel like I knew how to necessarily make things that reflected what I liked or you know, my own personal tastes. So that's why I leaned a lot more towards like realism um, because realism, you can't really mess it up. You have a reference, you know what to base it off of. And if you're trying to match it, like you kind of always have a blueprint. Whereas now I like to pick things where I have a lot more uh, freedom in what I'm making, you know? Um, so like with with the, the stuff I've been doing for Stephen Oakley's Demonic, Pokemon series I I love that he has like just the 2D drawings on a lot of them and it gives me the ability to kind of take the rendering and the lighting and the colors and stuff and kind of put my own influence into them um and same thing with like the the xenomorph piece that i did like that was based off of a 2d sketch um same thing with the orc piece that i just did those were just based off of uh 2d sketches and i was able to kind of take what was already there and um push it a little bit further uh or like put my own spin on it especially with like the orc piece like that was just a 2d drawing so i had the opportunity to um take that drawing and kind of figure out how i wanted it to look in the end so that's that's the nice part about like doing stylized stuff and um you know, that's kind of where I'm at now, as opposed to before. I just like to do people because it was, I always had some kind of reference for people, you know. Um, do you use Blender a lot? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, no, I don't use Blender at all. Um, I haven't used Blender since I was <clears throat> in high school. Um, that was the first program that I learned with. Uh, and back when I was in high school, it wasn't, it, it was fine. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't, uh, what it is now. And now I just have been so ingrained in using Maya that that is what I use now. So. I, uh, I haven't used Blender for a really long time, um, but that is what I originally started 3D on, um, and I used to watch uh, Andrew Price, uh, the Blender guru, back when I was in high school, um, and I started learning 3D with that, and that's kind of how I figured out that this is what I wanted to do. Um, I knew that... 
I wanted to get into games, but wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Characters always seemed like a cool option. And then uh, the longer I got into it, the more I realized that I liked it then and it wasn't going to change. And so I decided I want to do characters. And that is how we are here today. All started with Blender, which I'm very fortunate. I had a friend uh, tell me about it, you know, so I was kind of just in the right place at the right time. And he was like, hey, check out this software called Blender. And I was like, yeah, sure. And so I downloaded it because it was free. And then uh, I was able to start learning it. And I made some really, really bad art with it, um, if you could even call it art. And then I got into college and started using Maya. And that was what was taught there. And it was free to me. So, um, I just, you know, kind of stuck with it, and I still use it now, so no Blender for me, unfortunately, um, but maybe one day if <clears throat> I decide I don't want to pay for Maya anymore, which could happen, but I think the the bad part about uh, having to transition over to Blender, though, is the fact that like I would have to relearn where all the stuff is, and that's kind of really the big factor that deters me from doing it uh, right now, you know, so. Okay, so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to open, well, actually, let's save this. So this has been the fourth sculpting session on this guy. And let's see where we've come so far. And so this was last session. So this is at the beginning of this one. So yeah, definitely making some progress, getting some of those forms in there. Still got a long ways to go. But... this uh, stream has flown by. So I'm probably going to sculpt for maybe like another, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll probably call it there. And then I do have another stream coming up. Um, I don't remember what the date for that one is, though. Um, but if you're curious, I post all of this information on my uh, Instagram. So make sure to go and follow over there if if you want to see see new artwork see you know when I'm streaming things like that and yeah and I will post ahead of time on when I'm streaming on the ZBrush channel or you can even see when I'm posting on my own channel for streaming Let's see, do I have any shots of front face? Um, today has been a very uh, active chat, which I appreciate, so thank you guys for that. Always makes streaming much more, uh, much easier when there's people conversing, so, okay. So yes, these this back of the head is way too wide. I knew that there was a lot of things that were off, but this back of the head is definitely one of them. It's kind of hard to tell because in a lot of these pictures, like the the fur is dark on the muzzle, so a little bit hard to tell some of the forms. But we can get a general gist.
Sorry, guys, just trying to find some good reference for this front view. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, for this right now, I'm just trying to kind of get this front view a little bit closer to what I'm seeing in some of the references. Um, before the, the head for the, I, I was doing a German short haired pointer, I think was what it was. Um, and those heads were a little bit more like rounded, whereas the Belgian is a lot more like sharper kind of like thinner angles not quite as boxy so try and get some of that this like divide between the the um that bone is and then like the masseters right I think that's what those are called I don't remember now see prime example I don't I don't remember a lot of the anatomy names I can tell you what where the muscles are to some extent couldn't tell you what their names are but I can kind of point them out and I can tell you where they connect and what they're probably uh, doing but by no means an anatomy expert Okay, so things are looking good. We've made a lot of progress. So I'm going to probably start wrapping it up here in the next like five minutes or so. If you guys have any final questions or anything you guys want to chat about, feel free to throw those in the chat. We can talk about those a little bit before we wrap things up. What about you guys? What do you guys draw inspiration from? Any games, any movies, any artists? This probably needs to be a little bit higher on this. I feel like the eyes on this Breed 2 isn't quite as far apart. That looks a little bit better. Sharper angles on the ears to the head. Let's see, any other good images? They have a very menacing looking face. Very like, kind of emaciated. Maybe I'll keep this one for later and I can jump back to doing this one in another stream if we want. If we decide to keep going with dogs.
let's get some of this jowl situated too wrapping up a little bit higher not quite as like droopy and saggy a little bit more angle to it All right, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and kind of wrap things up here, see, feeling like we're at a good point to tidy things up. Um, here is the progress that we made today. So good amount of progress. Got some of those forms in there. Definitely starting to take a lot more shape. Still got a ways to go, um, but this is what we'll probably keep chugging along with for the next couple of streams until we get a finished head that we're happy with. Um, so hopefully you guys are finding some of this stuff informative. Uh, like I mentioned before, um, if you're interested in following some of my other work, you guys can uh, check my stuff out on YouTube. I'll just go ahead and share the link to that real quick uh let's see so you can find it here is my channel um and this is it you can also find me on artstation um along with some of the other uh links that you can find me at so i have an art station you can check me out there here's a bunch of my other work um feel free to check that out uh as well as instagram where like i said i announce anytime i'm going to be doing streams or things like that so here's some of my my constant posting there's like little behind the scenes things there um you know different stuff to check out on on there as well so uh feel free to give any of those a follow um like I said, thank you guys for, for coming and hanging out today. I always appreciate the support. It's always a good time having people in here and just kind of sculpting away, working through some stuff. Um, I will be streaming on the channel again, I believe, on the 20, 29th. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. That, I believe, is the next stream for the ZBrush live stream. Um, but again, thanks for coming by, guys, and I will see